Western Spring Television, Agobelewo, Oshobo, that's where we are. In the studio with me is uh, Food Science and Technology. Yes, I think I can, Food Scientist and Technologist, okay, whichever way. Dr. Adedayo Adeboye is the head of department, Food Science and Technology, Juni Oshun. Before we went on break, we were talking about uh, diversification, eating things like Besker, you call it, and I was trying to also supplement it with money, money. And uh, uh, this thing I said is Shakpa, uh, functioning as meat. Now, this is the reality of our time now. The days are gone. Is there food crisis in Nigeria as a food scientist? And if there is food crisis, does it frighten you? Yes, there is food crisis, or better put, food insecurity. Okay, what's you know, the difference? <laughs> <laughs> As I said, better put, it could just, it could just be plain with words. But, yeah. the, but the, the truth is, for a nation to be food secure, mm -hmm. four things must ha happen. Yeah. There must be availability. Okay? There must be... In availability, you're looking at in quantity and in quality. Okay, you're also looking at utilization. Okay, and then you're looking at stability. It's it's um not enough that the food is available. It must be available all through the year, mm -hmm. you know. And then when it's available again, you must your citizens must be eating it in the right quantity and in the right quality. You know, you talked about the one 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 becoming 001 or 100. Zero zero. That in itself is one symptom of food insecurity. You mm. know, so we are not there yet. We I'm asking, it. does it worry you? It does worry me as a food scientist uh -huh. because there are attendant problems to food insecurity. Taking away crime, you know, apart from crime. Because if people are hungry, they will break in yeah. and steal food. I mean, not steal any other thing, but food, you know. But beyond that, the health of the citizen is also challenged seriously. You'll be looking at things like undernutrition. There'll be malnourished children everywhere. You know, adults could even have the reserve, but children don't have it. So that's one major, what is a critical area of um, food insecurity that the nation should look into. How food affects health, the unavailability of food and its at, um, attendant effect on the health of the citizens. Spokesmen of government will want to tell us that we are not into a food crisis. It is that we, uh, food is available, except that it is costly. If it's costly, mm -hmm. it's unavailable. <laughs> Can a low-income earner yes. buy that food? No. So where's the availability? A, a bag of rice is about, uh, it's a little over 100,000 now. If you divide it by 30, sir, mm -hmm. one bowl is how much? That's about three point something naira. So a man or woman that earns 15,000 naira in a month. Or even scale it up to 30. <laughs> must he spend all on rice? rice. <laughs> so there's food crisis yes. in our country. How can, how do you food scientists intervene? At this point now, we, we need to begin to look into alternatives. Speaking before the break, we we're talking about lizard, mm. money, money. Mm. We talked about best care. Uh -huh. And you mentioned something very crucial. You said psychology. Mm. We have to start doing the reverse psychology okay. now, taking our minds back to all these alternatives that urbanization mm -hmm. well. has taken away from okay. us. Yeah. You know, it, it now becomes something that can't be heard of that you're yeah, eating termites yeah. as meal. No. And I'm beginning to have, um, you know, this moment where we, we may have to start looking at presentation. I did a study where we included termites in cookies mm -hmm. because Gen Z's, mm -hmm. Gen Alphas mm -hmm. may never imagine themselves. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You serve them a dish mm -hmm. and give them a spoon and it's termites yeah. in it. No, they, they, they won't take that. Mm -hmm. But if you include the termites in their cookies, yeah. it becomes acceptable. Yeah. So these are alternatives. These are ways where food scientists can intervene. Uh -huh. Food scientists. I was going to ask, how do you intervene? Yeah, these are ways of intervention mm -hmm. that, okay, 
all those foods that mm -hmm. we the society seems to yeah. frown on yeah. we can bring them back mm -hmm. but in socially acceptable forms now how how do you as scientists food scientists collaborate because it takes time for you to you can't do it on your own in your own small yes no we can't we can't we can't because if we have gotten to a level and time in this country that that must and then you must push it not just uh, these big companies must you must be in collaboration with them and then they push it to the world say well, give it i mean come to professionals they design some some uh, the content gen z's will, will yes gen, gen z's believe in taste Taste and appearance, yeah, yeah, appearance is, is yes. very germane to uh -huh. them. It's very, 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 very important. And so, yes, I agree with you that we must synergize with the companies. Uh -huh. There's something called multidisciplinary um, collaborations. Yeah. We collaborate even beyond the shores of Nigeria with people that have access to possibly um, better facilities or, you know, discoveries. And then we bring our own um, aspect into it. That collaboration is imminent more than ever before now because we want to start coming up with newer forms of food using available resources we still do plantation agriculture we do this with people farm what in your mind as a researcher you must have done one or two things closer if you have not done the question is what has caused the crisis in the insecurity to borrow your language yeah. in food the crisis of food insecurity are a lot mm -hmm. they are a lot um number one is this economic um, situation we also have weather mm -hmm. these days the weather um, trajectory has changed we have also in in weather you also have um, cultural practices farming practices mm -hmm. you know we also have um, the insecurity that is not uh, there's not food insecurity uh, the, the, the Threats to life. Yeah, it's, it's insecurity. Yeah, too. but it's not food. Right? Yeah, it's not food. But, but it leads to, but it leads to food because mm. farmers can't go to their farms yeah. or their farms are plundered by mm. animals, mm. you know, and so there's shortage. Yeah. We have disease infestation too, all these things. And if our governments are not paying proper attention, it will lead to food shortage. Um, there are times that we have seasonal glut. Now you don't even know when the food is in season because mm. certain things have hindered the availability of that food. Yeah. For instance, this year, between August, July, August, and September, people, farmers were expecting rains. Rains didn't come. So that's so mm -hmm. there was no glut of anything, mm -hmm. you know, because of the rains, you know, and that's and that's the climatic conditions or that's the effect of climate change on us too. Okay, you know, so food processing or processed food has appears to have taken over all over the world. The the white men brought it. Um, we used to, in those days, when you were young, you knew what kind of food mama and papa gave you. Every, everything was raw. Today, food processing has taken over. It has its good and bad points. Tell me the challenge that food processing is posing today. White men did not bring food processing. Mm, well, we've the, been processing food. Yeah, yeah, you are right. In in ages. Uh, you are right. Yes, but this but they brought some modifications. modifications yes, okay. they okay. brought some modifications. They brought some um, mechanizations yeah. into it. You know, the most traditional form of food processing is salting. Uh -huh. You know, in, in, now this is where processing and preservation um, clashes. You know, uh -huh. so where preservation is a form of processing. Uh -huh. You know, and um, for instance, last night based on the conversation i discovered that dodo ikiri uh -huh. was an accidental um, innovation because of processing okay. you know so yes i agree that along the line westerners have brought i rather call it ultra processing uh -huh. that is you know uh -huh. over processing uh -huh. but without food conversion we can't be where we are you can't have gary by putting um cassava in water Mm -hmm. something has to give there has to be some form of conversion that's mm -hmm. food processing mm -hmm. but i also at the same time also agree with you that some foods have become over processed mm -hmm. and that becomes a danger in itself mm -hmm. but you see economics is there is a lot of demand and supply sir westernization and urbanization or the fast evolving um developments that we see all around us people want to eat on the go yeah so I have a customer that wants to eat on the go. Right. I want to make money. Yeah. I will provide for you the food that you need to eat on the go. In spite of what it could 
challenge you in future. So the question is, what are these challenges? What are these dangers? Mm -hmm. And then can we minimize them? That's some, like I said, food processing is germane. It's important. But you now want to be careful that you do not eat certain overprocessed foods or the nature of processed foods you are looking for. Junks. Mm -hmm. Foods high in sugar and salt. You know, you the consumer, you know that what you're eating is high in sugar and salt. Mm -hmm. You don't want too much of that in your body system. But the fast-paced life that we live, the demands of job and all of that makes people to go for these things. I just feel that people should, as much as possible, let's stay green. As much as possible, let's stay natural. But at the same time, there are certain foods that must be processed for us to eat it. If you're going to put salt in your food, you can't go to the sea and take a cup of sea water and, okay. and, have, and have that as your salt, right? Yeah. But at the same time, salt is available. How much of it do you use? Sugar, Sugar is, is available. available. How much of it do you use? Palm oil is available. These are things that affect the palatability of food. Okay. We can't cancel them, right. but we can regulate the consumption okay. so that the far limiting, the far reaching effects are minimized. Time is not very much on our side, but we, I can't let you go without asking or requesting you to tell me, um, vicariously, the listener, the viewer, about genetically modified uh, foods. What, what are they a threat to us, especially in developing nations? What are they in the first place? And what? The that topic is a very huge one. I don't want just can't give exhaust me it. specifics. But from the word genetically modified right. foods, these are foods that have their DNAs altered mm -hmm. for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know. Um, when do they have the DNAs altered? When begin before uh, plantation or what? Definitely is during planting or before mm -hmm. planting um, mm -hmm. the seed crop. Yeah, and there are reasons for it. For instance, one major reason why genetic uh, modification comes in could be the desire to have disease resistance crops. Okay. If a particular crop has been known to be prone to this particular disease, you find, you find a way of solving that problem by altering. It could be just cutting away a part of its DNA or adding that resistance you know it's more um it's yeah. biotechnological yeah. right but at the end of the day so you eventually have a product that is now resistant to that disease mm -hmm. also you could have genetic modification in terms of productivity and productivity you want to have more volume mm -hmm. all right but there are regulations to these things the question is are people obeying mm -hmm. are planters obeying are processors obeying but genetically modified foods are not in itself dangerous. Oh. It is how we go about the it. The fear has been, oh, don't eat it. Uh, we you are want eating a lot of it. You are, eating, are you not eating broiler? <laughs> <laughs> you are eating broiler, you are yes. eating oiler. Uh -huh. These are genetically modified uh -huh. organisms. You know, so they, not all of them yeah. will be harmful. I'm not, I don't want to talk in absolute when you talk about sense. Animals, yes, animals. But the so, why plants. are you excusing animals and not excusing plants? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. It's knowledge. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's knowledge. Many, may, most times, our affairs could be based on ignorance mm -hmm. or not having enough knowledge yes. um, about um, certain things. But as food scientists, as food scientists, we have been informed that genetic modification mm -hmm. is supposed to be a solution to a problem. Okay. It's not supposed to be a, um, a money-making venture. Has it now become, rather than solution, has it become a problem? It might have been hijacked. I don't want to speak, you know, for, yeah, but the intent, the, S, the very essence of it was to solve problems, Problem. to make life easier. For instance, as food processors, there are certain, you pick a plant like tomato. Tomato means different things to a food scientist. So a food scientist that wants tomato juice, there is a kind of tomato you want. There, there are certain um, constituents that that tomato must have, a particular level of moisture, okay. a particular level of solids. Right. But so the maker of tomato paste okay. is the other way around. Mm -hmm. Money. No, not money. Uh, so you want less moisture, okay. more solid. Okay. To right. the juicer, you want mm -hmm. more moisture, less solid. Mm -hmm. So yes, at some point, you may need to make alterations so that you get 
um, what you want. And that's where modification comes in, you know, where you now alter the DNA traits of the parent plant and then it gives birth to um, all of that. So Today we have myths surrounding some foods. Yeah. So many myths. What is responsible for this? And how, how realistic are the myths? Many myths um, are born out of possibly, uh, you know, in, in our culture, possibly to preserve the culture or to prevent bad habits, so to speak. But many things are incorrect. For instance, you tell a pregnant woman not to eat snails. Why? Uh, culturally based. But scientifically, is, is there any proof? Is the eldest mm. or one of the eldest? You well, know, yeah, but this, are, this is a cultural. It, it, for instance, people from Benue State, yeah. they're not likely to eat snails. Okay. While the man from Ikiri <laughs> <laughs> or Oshubu or yeah. Ibadan yes. who enjoy snails. Yeah. So it's a cultural thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is up to you, specialists, professionals, to make to information let, yes. available. Yes, I agree. Can we also have even uh, snail flavor and things like that? Put it in, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the idea just came to me. Uh, if it is that good, yes, the pregnant woman needs it, but it, the culture doesn't allow her. She lives in Benway State to so pump something in. and. Uh, but you cannot give her food and not let her know she's eating snail or something that has snail in it. Except something like pork, which is religious. All right. So it's, anything, anything else? Um, it's left to the end users, uh -huh. sir. If I know that snail is beneficial to my health, it's rich in iron, mm. and I need it, I have to find a way of eating it. I how, would not tell you that I ate it. How I does he know? Or she, he, he or she knows? Uh, yes. It is your, your, yes. your, your professionals. You professionals, rather. Who must? I said give it. The information. Yeah, give the information. And, and collaborate with the the big uh, so, so organizations yes, uh, I, to I remember, push this out. Yeah, so that's where, again, that's another example of collaboration with the nutritionist. Mm. So, you know, sometimes the nutritionists are closer to these end users than we are. Yeah. And so we send information out during clinics, during um, engagements. They give this information out, telling them how nutritious um, this food. It's left to the individual to come out of the myth, you know, that this food is, is dangerous. Or processed foods. Not all processed foods are bad. You know, processed foods are a means of convenience. Between convenience and the harm, which that you scientists know, where would you situate the, the end user? Between convenience and the possible likely harm. That it, but what are these possible likely arms i don't know you I, are as, as the a scientist, scientist uh -huh. i feel that some arms may come in when we overdo mm -hmm. when we overdo things or when we make outrageous demands or, or when producers are dishonest and that's not the fault of the food scientist mm -hmm. i've given you a formula mm -hmm. what you do with the formula mm -hmm. as the manufacturer now yeah. is yours you know so but at the same time we are thank god for modernization Consumers can be aware of what they are eating. They must be sensitive to what they are eating. Food processing in itself does not have any harm. Mm -hmm. But along the line, many things have been tweaked, many things, you know. But at the, at the end of the day, ask yourself, do you really need it? This sugar that you take, do you really need it? And so, is your choice to choose convenience or harm? Um, when you choose convenience as a young person, when you grow old, it becomes the problem is it, that's a myth sir it's a myth yes okay <laughs> well, <laughs> but you have just told me uh, you want to choose between convenience and uh, your health <laughs> you can still minimize it for instance uh -huh. convenience gary is convenience yes but how much sugar do, how much sugar do you put into it do you have to put sugar in the gary we were some people have gotten to the level that without sugar they cannot take gary that's i said we also have to convenience <laughs> the harm anyway the the topic uh the the conversation cannot end in this studio i'd like to appreciate you for coming dr adedayo adeboye head of department food uh science. food science and technology uni Osho, Osho state university it's been a very interesting conversation 
and as I did mention it from the beginning, food is a leveler. It touches everybody. No matter who, the presidents eat food, kings eat it, scientists eat, and we, the, the poor masses, we all <laughs> eat it. I hope you got something very informative about what to do and what not to do. Most importantly, it made us understand that going into extra time is not necessary in circumstances like this. You have to be moderate in everything you take. I'm Adito Yishishi Tualamo. I thank you for watching and hopefully next week we'll bring you another guest. Madam, thank you for finding time at a thank short you for notice having to me, come. Sir. Thank you. That has been our package. We we'll see you next week.